My name is Carl Malbrain. I've been working for 30 years in the energy and environmental sector. And uh, for the last year now, I'm looking more at community building and crowdsourcing and funding initiatives. And you just gave your keynote over here. It's the Arctic Circle. It's uh, the crowdsourcing summit uh, Arctic, uh, uh, Arctic Circle. Uh, you, uh, your background isn't uh, in the new uh, energy market. No, uh, I'm, uh, I'm from the old school. But after 30 years, I realized that it was an old and dying paradigm. And uh, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm reborn almost and realizing that we have to go another way. And what kind of other ways can we go to? I think we, we have to go away from the centralized uh, power plants and long transmission and distribution lines, bringing the energy to the consumer. I think it's time the consumer produces his own uh, energy and I think the sun is a, is a wonderful source for that. And what are the, uh, what are the, what are the new uh, energy initiatives in the world uh, where you are looking to right now? Well, uh, we are trying to, to build an, a platform with the MIT alumni uh, to solve some of the big problems uh, the world is, uh, is facing. Uh, it's an open technology uh, platform and also trying to set up uh, a social impact fund uh, to bring uh, energy to the poor, a little bit like the United Nations Energy for All program. Uh, we're doing that also with uh, the Brothers of Love, a congregation uh, in Belgium uh, who are present in about 30 countries around the world, uh, building uh, or they have uh, schools there, they have, uh, they have hospitals, uh, they have other activities and uh, maybe the sun can help them also uh, providing them with a recurrent uh, source of income. And what do you think the biggest challenges are uh, in implementing these new techniques in the existing world? I think if we really go to a new paradigm, I think money. And so we may also need uh, alternative uh, types of currencies. And uh, so it was very inspiring to hear Daniel here uh, uh, and see maybe cryptocurrencies or time dollars or maybe some other form where people uh, can exchange uh, services, but even goods. And uh, because now there is a lot of money, but there is no liquidity. The money doesn't go to the people who need the money. And you also gave an example of the, of the Tesla experiment. Can you say something about that for people who haven't heard about, uh, about that? Well, it's, uh, it's an, exp an experiment uh, Nikola Tesla did uh, about 100 years ago, the, the Wardenclyffe uh, Tower, where he not only was dreaming of um, powerless uh, transmission uh, of signals, of data, of communication, but also of power. And uh, it would be nice now that we celebrate soon uh, the 100th anniversary, not only to build a museum, but even build the tower again and do the experiment over again. And then finally we will have the proof if he was a, if he was a fool and only a magician, because I think he might have been a genius and be 100 years ahead of his time. I think the border between genius and fool was quite thin and discussable. And, and how much money uh, would you need for such a experiment? Well, uh, I, I, uh, I haven't done the calculations, uh, but uh, if I see that uh, some ideas uh, raise a couple of million uh, euros of dollars, I think uh, with new technology and software and crowdsourcing and funding, I think with uh, probably one to five million, you, you would go a very, very long way. In, uh, in redoing that experiment. Okay, cool, let's do that. And when you look at uh, the environment over here, uh, at, uh, at, where we, at where we are uh, right now, what lessons can you give them to, to them uh, from your expertise? Lessons I learned or lessons, I think uh, I, I should be modest, uh, I learned more for, from them than lessons I can give to them. Uh, to me, it was very inspiring that uh, a local community is uh, re trying to revitalize uh, itself and uh, through cooperative uh, initiatives. Because everywhere we see the statistics that half of the world population lives in big villages and that percentage will go up to 70%. I don't know if that is a good idea. And uh, I always feel lonely in a big city, despite the fact that a lot of people uh, are around me. Uh, here you, you are alone, but you're never lonely. Whenever you meet another human being here, which I found uh, very inspiring, they greet you, they stop and greet and talk, which never happens when you're in the subway in a big, uh, in a big city. But uh, I think the, the lesson I learned here, we have to change the educational system. And it was very inspiring that these people uh, reopened uh, their 
their high school uh, for their kids and decided to do it in a very interactive, uh, uh, creative way, where actually the kids took over the school, and which was a fabulous experience uh, to see. So for me, I learned more than lessons I could give uh, to the people of uh, Wollerim. But if you had to give them uh, some lessons, so what would they be? Lessons, well, I heard that uh, two of their main assets were taken away from them. Uh, the water by uh, Vattenfalls, uh, uh, a power company, and the forest by big uh, forest companies. And that uh, the local community get very little in return, except for some breadcrumbs or, uh, or peanuts. But they have two other assets nobody can take away from them. Uh, I think uh, it's the sun and the other one they should cherish is the silence. So it's so good here to hear that you don't hear anything. Uh, where we are, uh, where I come from, I hear planes, trains and highways and cars. So for me silence is very precious and uh, I think those two treasures, uh, the sun and the silence, uh, they really should uh, cherish.